how did this helicopter affect the life of this guy? Let's find out on Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. Sketching airliners at JFK, one of my favorite pastimes in the 1960s. Another title might be How Drawing Just for Fun Led to a 40-Year Career in Aviation Art. Before we dive in, just a quick reminder uh, to please sign up on our VIP subscriber list. You'll be notified of new programming and receive a free bi-monthly newsletter. We have a link in the title block as well. Okay, our story begins at John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York. This is what the airport looks like today. A bustling city, thousands of airplane movements, hundreds of thousands of people. But in 1948, when the airport first opened, it was uh, much simpler times. This is the overpass on the uh, Van Wyck Expressway into the airport. Boeing Stratocruiser taxiing out for takeoff. And this is what the airport looked like in 1952. Now, I should mention that living on Long Island, about oh, 15 minutes uh, east of the airport, uh, I was looking at these airplanes taking off and, and uh, flying out on their way to Europe. They'd fly over our backyard at oh, 2,500 feet or so, that beautiful music of those radial engines. And it was just captivating. I was fascinated with it and uh, already heading into a career in aviation. Just 10 years later, the transition from props to jets created an airport that looked like this. This is called Terminal City, a revolutionary idea where each airline would have its own individual terminal building with its own individual architecture. Again, just 10 years from the previous photo. On Christmas Eve day of 1963, the airport was renamed after losing our beloved President John F. Kennedy. That's his younger brother, Teddy, at the lectern. I was there. And so the airport designator changed from Idlewild, the original name, to JFK. But uh, as an early teen, it was just uh, my favorite thing in the world to get on a bus and a subway and another bus, hour and a half each way, uh, to get to um, the airport and look at airplanes like this. And then I would go home and draw them. Of course, all my jets took off in full afterburner. But uh, I was just captivated with the scenes, the sights, the smells, jet A fuel. The whole experience of being at the airport was just a, a wonderland to me. And I couldn't wait to represent it in art. By 1961, the Caravelle was in service. This was the United Executive Men Only New York to Chicago left uh, Every day at uh, nine in the morning and five o'clock, I was always there uh, on the weekends at five to see it uh, take off. And this is my depiction of it. I was working in Prismacolor pencil, which was a dry medium and uh, relatively quick. And I just love drawing airplanes. Then there was this machine, the Boeing Vertol 107-2, uh, operated by New York Airways. And this uh, photo was taken at Teterboro Airport, but the helicopter linked all the major New York airports together. And as I said, carried 25 people in uh, jet comfort. And it was just an amazing experience. I was just uh, really captivated with this airplane. And um, I was drawing sketches. I would be there at the American Airlines terminal at, at JFK and looking at the uh, details of the helicopter. And then I'd go home and draw it. And this is my view out the uh, window at gate two of the American terminal. And the gentleman you see there is Mr. John Sloan. He was the passenger agent for New York Airways. A very uh, kind man, very generous. And he noticed that I'd always be at the window. He actually uh, let me go down on the ramp and, and draw the helicopter from life uh, right on the ground. Um, he had asked uh, to see the drawing that I was doing and actually wanted it for the boardroom at LaGuardia, the airport uh, headquarters, the airline headquarters, I should say. And this is the Prismacolor drawing. And I wound up trading this to Mr. Sloan for two round trip tickets from uh, Idlewild at that time to Newark uh, via Wall Street and return. Uh, I took my mom because uh, she'd never flown before and it was her birthday. So that was kind of a neat birthday present. That's our helicopter there at Newark at the old terminal. 
And uh, the evolution of the technique was happening big time. And so uh, to go from a United Caravel like this to a United Caravel like this was, uh, these drawings are about, oh, maybe a year and a half, two years apart. And uh, I was developing my technique and learning a lot of um, rendering styles. Now, I know you're saying to yourself, I've seen this somewhere. And you're right. Busted. It was the cover for Ravel's SAS Caravel. And as uh, Bill Mitchell of General Motors fame always used to say, if you're going to steal, rob a bank, not a grocery store. So I learned from the best. Jack Lenwood, God bless him, my first art teacher, years before I ever met him and, and became friends. Uh, speaking of Lenwood, uh, he always played pranks on us. And so this is one of my favorites. Uh, there's two airplanes in this picture, right? Take a look. Take a good look. Look closely at the tail. And then what's below it on the other side? There's nothing there. There's no landing gear. There's no wing showing. It's just the tail of an airplane sticking out. And, of course, I had to do that as well. Well, let's talk about observation decks because this is a pivotal uh, part of the drawing experience uh, being at the airport. And uh, this is the original terminal building from 1948, still operated into the early 60s. And you see the observation deck there. A couple of gentlemen up on top. It's just literally right on top of the, the first story of the terminal. So you're not very high up, but this is what it looked like. And then uh, a little later on, that you see the, the famed arch roof uh, triple hangers there in the background. And of course, that's now a, a capital Viscount on the ramp. But then uh, in the early 60s, Terminal City started to take shape. And the first building completed was the Eastern Terminal. Uh, which is now Terminal 1 at the current airport. Um, and this is the early days. It's uh, the very beginning of the jet age. This is 1959, actually. There aren't any jets on the airport yet. Uh, maybe occasionally a Pan Am 707. That would be about it. And speaking of Pan Am, the uh, umbrella-shaped uh, world port is uh, under construction there at the upper right. But the observation deck on the eastern terminal, again, just one story uh, or on top of the one-story uh, terminal uh, finger, um, you take shots like this, although it was really cold in the wintertime, or shots like this looking out toward Jamaica Bay. But the proximity to the airplane and the fact that you were open air and could take pictures like this was, was very special. It's uh, no longer possible today. Then there was the observation deck on the International Arrivals Building. And uh, underneath the uh, name of the airport there is the Golden Door Restaurant, very posh five-star eatery, which was uh, a very special place to have birthday lunches with friends. And then uh, the observation deck was uh, two stories above ground, and so you'd get uh, views looking out to the south like this. And then one of my all-time favorites, the uh, observation deck on the 12th floor of the tower just below the cab, and then you get views like this. Now, this is kind of cool. On the left there, you see the um, uh, north finger of the International Rivals building, and then you see people on the observation deck. And that is the rooftop that thousands of screaming girls were running across in February of 1964 when these guys first arrived from England. But here's another view. And again, look at all the people on the, on the deck. It, this was just a really... Uh, routine pastime for folks going to the airport and looking at all the planes. So uh, with my sketch pad, this is the kind of stuff I'd be doing. And uh, I just couldn't get enough of it. And it's observational drawing. This is the basic skill. It's like practicing scales as a musician. This is the basic hand-eye coordination that you need uh, to be an artist, regardless of what the subject matter is. But for me, it was airplanes. And then I noticed one day I was drawing and, and there was a Lufthansa DC-8 Series 55 with the fan engines. And I remember thinking, well, wait a minute. I'm an airliner guy. I know Lufthansa has 707s. What are they doing with the DC-8? Well, it turns out that in 1964, for just six months, uh, Lufthansa leased a DC-855 to supplement their fleet for the summer. I just happened to see it. But it wasn't just any DC-8. It was this DC-8. It was Ship One, the very first airplane that ever flew. Uh, at Douglas in Long Beach. And uh, this airplane operated for a number of different airlines. But lo and behold, I got to see a Lufthansa DC-8. And that Twin Beach uh, was another interesting experience, which I'll talk about in a moment. But this takes us to the transient ramp, the general aviation 
uh, ramp on the north side facing the triple hangers. And uh, this is a drawing that I started, never finished, but this has got to be the smallest airplane I ever saw at uh, JFK. It's a Piper Comanche, but this was on the ramp. And again, I just was uh, observational drawing exercises, uh, just couldn't get enough. This is another uh, interesting combo. That's a, a Beach Baron in the foreground and a Volpar tricycle gear mod on a twin Beach D-18. Of course, there's a New York Airways helicopter coming in for landing and a DC-8 landing on... Uh, uh, runway 13 left. Well, let's talk about this machine. This is the Pilgrim Airlines Twin Beach. Uh, it flew from, uh, at that time now, Kennedy Airport up to uh, New London, uh, Groton, Connecticut, uh, taking businessmen and uh, other folks up there back and forth. Left in the morning, came back to uh, JFK at, the, uh, at about 5 o'clock. And I did a painting of this. I should say a Prismacolor drawing, and uh, that was my second trade for flight time. Uh, the, uh, the airline only operated Monday through Friday, and I wasn't going to turn down the offer to fly in it, so it's the only time in my life I ever cut school. Yeah, I know. Now, here's a, it's a drawing, actually, but it, there's no real line work. It's all uh, what they call a stipple. Here's a close-up, and you're actually creating the shape minimal line there you see the gold uh, accent stripe under the windows but uh, you're creating the shape using small dots with a rapidograph pen and here's the pan am uh, world port called the umbrella this is what it looked like from inside uh, looking out it was an interesting combination of open air and yet you were covered uh, by the big uh, roof but this is one of the gates and so i was there drawing uh, the 707. And as you see here, the International Rivals building, the original tower, and behind that arch roof was the customs area. And this is a perspective exercise done in Rapidograph. It had a balcony, and you could look down and see where those long tables look like a supermarket checkout. And that's where passengers came in um, and had their luggage inspected by U.S. Customs. This is the original east end of the uh, original terminal, the original ramp, I should say, uh, used by TWA before they built their own terminal at Terminal City. And uh, that became, of course, the famous uh, Aero Saarinen concrete bird. And they called it that because it looked like a giant eagle that was landing. Uh, just an amazing piece of architecture. And it's preserved today as a historic landmark. Uh, it was really cool. The gates uh, were real up close to the airplanes. You get some good views, good detail studies if you were looking at uh, the jets. And uh, this is the ultimate uh, evolution of the building uh, where you had the jumbo jets after 1970 up there on the left, the original uh, uh, finger and gates on the right from 1962. This is what it looks like today. The uh, terminal is now no longer used. This part of the terminal is no longer used by TWA. That was absorbed by American Airlines in 2001. And the terminal was closed, but repurposed as a hotel. And this is the lobby now of what is called the TWA Hotel at Idlewild JFK Airport. There's even a Lockheed Constellation on the ramp. And uh, this is a 1649, which never operated from this building per se, but it's still pretty cool. It's a bar inside. And just to see that machine on the, on the ramp, uh, kudos to the folks that made that uh, all happen. So, drawing airplanes at JFK, Idlewild Airport, a huge part of the career. Uh, just uh, never anticipated how far it was going to go, but I loved drawing airplanes. And so, um, that became a career for McDonnell Douglas, uh, illustrating airplanes for Airbus Industry and uh, any number of uh, private and business clients, as you see here. But it all began at my favorite airport, JFK in New York. Oh, and by the way, helicopters? Yeah, I still love them. So there you have it, a look at the beginnings of a budding career as an aviation artist and how it all happened at New York's Idlewild JFK Airport. Special thanks to the wonderful folks there who made so many incredible opportunities uh, happen. And uh, I'm very, very uh, appreciative to all these fine folks for uh, really being a big part of the story you just saw. So there you have it. And again, thank you so much for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat. 
Appreciate you watching. And uh, as always, until next time, take care.